in house, but then you have thousands of people around the world who are contributing to this product. How do you manage that process? And are the rules of innovation different for those who are in house versus those who are outside the company walls? A bit. Like if you're if you're participating in Mozilla as a volunteer, right, you can do whatever you want. I mean, why else do you participate? You have to have the sense that this is mine, I'm doing what I want. So, uh, but, but once you become an employee, of course, there's a little bit of guidance. It's, there's partly innovation, what do people want, but there's also, uh, here's what needs to get done. And so there's overlaid on it, here's a sense of stuff that has to happen, and here's a set of things that have to happen to the product. So at the edges, it's different. Uh, but the, the idea of new thoughts, more people, more engagement, and what can you do that stirs ideas elsewhere in yourself and others is, I'd say, universal. What do you think? You know, the only thing I'd add sort of practically, um, you think of a traditional engineering um, department, and you have heads for different parts of the product, so someone's responsible for the networking layer, the security layer, or the graphics. Um, at Mozilla, we have that, but it's not necessarily true that everybody who is either the heads of those departments or part of those departments works for Mozilla. Um, those roles are sort of delegated and pushed out to the edges, and those individual heads have a lot of authority and autonomy to make decisions on behalf of the project. Um, and so um, it's, very, it's very much a virtual organization. Um, clearly, there are people who are working full-time on the project and they have a lot of influence, but overall, I think it's important and part of how we've been successful at innovating um, by ensuring that, uh, that that decision making is distributed and decentralized. Are those roles changing frequently in this very large, diffuse organization, or is it pretty structured and is it something that you can kind of count on from week to week or month to month or year to year? Well, there's some of both, and that depends where you are in the organization. So if you're close to the product, like if you're doing something or you've got an idea and you want it to ship in or as part of Firefox, there are a lot of rules. Uh -huh. Because the product has to appeal to three or four hundred million people, it's got to be fast, it's got to be secure. There's a lot of discipline. Uh -huh. So when you get that close, yes, there's a lot of rules, but they don't change very much. And the way we do it has been consistent for almost a decade. You know, the pressure on performance and size goes up, but the rules are the same. The other end of the spectrum, though, is where Chris is really active, which is how to build frameworks that aren't quite so close to the product. So how to get design, for example. We've got a big project on how to bring um, innovation at scale into the design phase of a product, mm -hmm. which I don't know if people have done in the uh -huh. same way and, and, and as large. So there, the rules are new. And, and they can be very flexible and, and make them up and change them because these are the experiments that are the prototypes before we get to the product. Great. So, how would you, what would you add to that? Is, is there, I mean, the rules, do you... In, in, well, you know, I think you, know, the, you asked about how rigid or how stable the structure yeah, is. Yeah. I think it depends where you are in the product development life cycle. Mm -hmm. So from like the ideation to the prototyping phase, it's very fluid and like you'd expect in most sort of startup environments. But as you get to, um, you know, productizing and shipping and supporting product, it becomes much more um, formalized. And, you know, by necessity, in order to ship a product and support it for many people, um, you need to have sort of a robust and stable foundation. Yeah, I can imagine. So what's, let's say that someone in the room here wanted to get involved, or someone in the blogosphere said, I am passionate about Firefox and I want to get engaged with this. What would be the entry point for someone if they want to be an innovative contributor to this process? You know, I think it depends on what you're passionate about. Um, you know, we have lots of ways to get involved um, with Mozilla. So, for example, if you want to get involved in line with perhaps your um, professional um, career, um, there's ways to get involved in our marketing program, our QA program, um, as, a, as a software developer, helping code the product. And then on the innovation side, um, we have ways in which you can come up with just ideas. So, um, through the labs.mozilla.com site and the concept series, um, we welcome anyone to, 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 to take part. And, you know, you're welcome to come and contribute an idea. Um, you know, ideas are great, even better if you want to sketch something on a napkin and submit sort of a mock-up or, or, or some sketch of what you're thinking, um, because, you know, that idea could iterate and evolve, and it might inspire somebody else to then take it and go to the next phase, which is essentially to prototype it into something that real people can, can try and, and provide feedback. So, you mentioned the labs. Maybe you could tell us a little bit about the labs, because obviously that sounds like your area that you're focusing on and, and sort of a place where all these new ideas are percolating. How does that work? Well, so we formed, the, we formed Mozilla Labs um, a couple years ago in order to sort of carve out a space within the Mozilla world where, you know, people had 
permission to, to try new things and really permission to fail. Um, and so we, and, and we've invited everyone to participate. So um, the labs has sort of this open call for participation. Uh, we run design challenges and design jams. Uh, we've been partnering with universities from around the world um, for over the last year. Um, the, the, the most recent one was around tab browsing, and we had about 200 um, prototypes developed um, that we're now evaluating and working with those teams to consider for future Firefox product releases. Um, and then we have a set of projects that uh, we've identified as having high potential, and we've, we've been incubating um, as potential um, new avenues in which the, the web could go or the browser could go. Um, those involve services or new user interfaces. Great. So you said that anyone is welcome. So is this people, everyone in-house, or as well as people who are? It's a worldwide effort. Um, you know, I think we didn't say it, but you know, everything we do is, is for the public benefit. It's a public asset, um, and it's all open source. So everyone's welcome to participate. Um, you could be involved in our projects, or you could take the code and assets from the projects and, and build them yourself. Terrific. So it's a public effort. It's the, it's the innovation, really a scale side. So innovation can be messy. And as Chris says, innovation, good innovation, can be really scary. And uh, and we expect a lot of these, they'll be interesting ideas, but won't go anywhere. So we, we're building a framework to have massive input. And then, of course, the, the next steps are find the key idea and, and make it elegant. And uh, with the simplicity and elegance, we can actually put it in the product. And so those are the stages that we try to go through. Terrific. So if you really want some radical innovation that's really going to push the boundary, what would you do? I mean, you were talking earlier when we were chatting backstage about breaking things. Uh, how do you break things in a constructive way? Well, you know, one, I think, going to culture, you know, we mentioned the idea of, like, not being afraid of ideas or where they come from, the source of ideas. So getting away from the sort of not invented here mentality that most organizations tend to suffer from once you hit a certain size. So I think that's important. Um, and then two, I think it's it's opening the door and welcoming people to participate. And practically, um, you know, what we found is a great way to do that is opening up your product to be enhanced or 